Hello, welcome aboard Nigel with you, Nigel's Model Bench. I've just had the postman arrive and I was very happy to receive quite a large cardboard box and it's full of freebies from this man here, Moss 6510 Models. If you don't know Moss's channel, go and have a look. He's on YouTube, he's on Facebook and he's on Twitter. Um, every Monday night, 8pm, he does a live stream and quite a lot of the time I'm on there. There's um, all sorts of people on there. You've got Sully on there who's built that beautiful gannet. That's, uh, there's a link in my Gannet review, um, videos, if you go and have a look at that link. He's built a beautiful replica of the um, the derelict Gannet, which is all covered in moss and everything. I'm sure you all know about <laughs> moss, funnily enough. Um, yeah, so moss has recently also become the UK distributor for Outlaw Paints. So outlawpaints.co.uk. So that's why these stickers are here. They're not here permanently. They're stuck down with uh, masking tape. But um, I've just done them for the purpose of these videos this video to give him a shout out because he's been very generous and sent me a gift um well there's actually a few gifts here and i'm going to show you them um i've actually sent him a gift today as well so today is wednesday the 17th is it or the 18th 17th of july 2024 and as i say this is this has just arrived so the first thing i'm going to show you is this book he he does a um a fanzine, a magazine for his followers. So you, you can go over to Moss and become a member and you get magazines sent to you and stuff. But what he's done, he's decided to do a book and he's called the book I Spilt My Tammy Extra Thin. Now this is available on Amazon. If you, go, if you go and search for it, I Spilt My Extra Thin, Ramblings from a Scale Modeler, and you won't have this not for resale because this is a, a review sample. So um, he needn't have done that because I don't sell anything that I'm given for review. I never do. I give it away. Um, or I just keep it, but um, I will never sell anything that I am uh, that's given that's donated to the channel. No way ever. So um, you can see in this, uh, his kind of um, his kind of thinking with this book. You can see on the front here, we've got 1984 build model paint decals. 2022, we've got build model. Shading, filler, resin, photo etch, paint, primer, weathering, chipping, diorama, masking, washes. It's just, it's got crazy, hasn't it? And I talked about this the other day in my Gannett review, you know. Years ago, you would build a model aircraft and you would super detail the cockpit and, you know, you might go and buy some separate decals for the instrument panels. Now you can, well, then you could get a, a, a photo etch instrument panel with an acetate film behind it. It was like, wow, you know, this is unbelievable. And then, then they came along with pre-painted photo etch with, with a backing panel with all the gauges on there. So you ba basically built up a sandwich of photo etch to give your instrument panel. And then comes along the 3D stuff, you know, you've got the 3D printed. And now we've got the Quinter Studios decals, which you've seen me use on my Gannett. And it's just crazy. There's no reason now why, you know, the average modeler out there can't build a perfect, beautiful cockpit because you've just got it all to hand. I mean, it's, I wonder where we're going to get to the point where they just you just buy a finished model because they're, they're sort of de-skilling the, 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 the hobby almost, if you like, because you can just buy all this extra stuff and screw it on, glue it on, bolt it on, whatever, and you've got an absolute masterpiece. So, um... But it is nice, isn't it? Because there are many of us out there, including me, that can't really scratch build. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to scratch build much. I, I gotta be honest. But this book is, um, it's basically a, a kind of, I don't want to call it tongue in cheek, but it does have a com comedy element to it. Um, and you know, it's like you can see there. Uh, what, what did he say there? You know, to re-release or retool. Would a modeler give a shit? <laughs> and we'll have a look at what he's got to say about that. Um, I did an unboxing and a review of a classic kit from Airfix on my channel. It was a Bristol Belvedere 192 172 seconds ago, which I had my huge stash of kits. That deep down, I knew there was more chance of me climbing Everest than ever building them all. The premise of the video I create with unboxing old kits is whether they would stand up to being reboxed in the Airfix classic line, vintage classic line. These kits generally have new design decal sheet and occasionally improved instruction sheets. Personally, I love Vantage Classic, Classic, the nostalgia is there. Most are priced under a tenner and do need a little bit of work as, as the tooling is old, so it does have wear and tear, which allows flash to happen and the glass can be poor. But if you work a bit harder, you get a decent finish. And this is what I was saying just now, you know, you can, you can sort of take these old kits and put a bit of work into them and it becomes your masterpiece rather than, you know, a shake and bake Tamiya kit. 
Uh, which brings me to a comment on the video from one of my favourite YouTubers, John Parker. He's often on with Moss on a Monday night as well. His knowledge on modelling is excellent and I really enjoy his down-to-earth approach to the hobby. I wonder if I get a mention in here, Moss, I wonder. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great book. You know, the other weekend I visited Avon Model Show on the way home and decided to treat myself to a McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese, large fries and a chocolate milkshake, plus on the side a double cheeseburger because one is never enough to make you feel full. That's exactly what I have, Mass, but, uh, Moss. Sometimes I have a Big Mac rather than a double, double the quarter pounder with cheese. Do you find you eat it about an hour later you, and you belch and feel hungry again? Yes, I do, exactly. Um... Anyway, I sat at the table looking out of the window of this service station. I noticed about 20 people by the door in what was a makeshift smoking area. They were puffing on this battery-operated smoke machine called an e-cigarette, but we fondly named them vapes. Whilst looking at them, I noticed they were all throwaway ones, and in fact, I noticed two vapors were chucking empty ones straight into the bin. And as at this point, I thought, how is it fair that these single-use vapes with the plastics, metal, and a power pack full of chemicals to make these things work were even allowed, especially as I'm struggling to suck my very thick chocolate milkshake through a wet and soggy paper straw that, as of now, because they are single-use. McDonald's dropped the plastic straw for a paper one which can't even be recycled. Besides the single-use non-recyclable paper cup, had a single-use lid that is still shit in plastic. And you can see from these sort of comments... You know, the, it's, it's an absolute great book, and I'm going to read it cover to cover. It looks like a lot of fun. So, um, great bit of bedtime reading there. Um, I don't read books, but I think I will read this one because it's... What's he got here about the author? Moss is an avid scale model who takes his whiskey with Diet Coke, his decaf coffee black, and is in bed by 1am most nights. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... um. Gluing photo etch to photo etch with CA glue, like making some kind of box, is a shot in the dark unless you solder. Exactly. Attaching metal to plastic will forever be hit and miss. Well, the VMS glues have helped with that. It is used as a tool to ramp up the price of the kit. It doesn't necessarily make it better. Yeah, he's talking about photo etch here. Yeah. Why do I dislike photo etch? Would you make like a list? Trying to bend and glue a PE piece that is a few millimetres long made me question my life choices. It's a poor man's way of releasing kit as another variant. Yep. I want the choice of using plastic, not PE, because I bought a plastic scale model kit. That's right. It can be brittle. It snaps with ease and is fragile. Yeah, a lot of the older trumpeter stuff is very brittle. Um, it's almost like um, Kendall Mink Cake. It's real crumbly. So, yeah, very good book. Recommended. Um, as I say, I'll read it and I'll probably talk about it more in the future. But yeah, I, I, he sent me this, so I wanted to just show you all and make sure you know that it exists. And as I say, it's available on Amazon. I think you can get a Kindle copy of it as well. So he also sent me this. Now, if you watch the show this Monday night just gone, which would have been today's the 17th, yeah, which would have been the 15th of July 2024, you'll see that he was talking about having trouble and he'd commented to Dale at Airfix that this is actually not a starter set. So I said, I, I should have a go at one of them. And then he said, I'll send you one, mate. So here we are. He sent me this kit free of charge. I've sent him a kit free of charge. He's going to like it. So this is the Airfix starter set. RNLI Shannon Class Lifeboat. And this is the, the modern lifeboat they're using. They're also doing an aftermarket decal set, which I think is a tenor. But that de extra decal set enables you to make any one of the lifeboats currently used and f plan future builds for um in the in the um in the rni camp so there we go and a minimum of 90p from the sale of this product will be paid in support of the rnli so that's what airfix are doing um so basically you've got a plastic kit in here we've got some poly cement we've got a couple of brushes i actually like these brushes they're really good and then we've got one two three four five six are they the six paints we get i, wonder, I don't know Maybe that's just a generic image. Um, paint colours included, shown on the rear of the pack. Yes, we do get six. So there we go. We got all those paints there. But I won't need those because Moss has very kindly sent me these. And these are the Outlaw paints, specially made for this kit. So they can all be also be used on the other lifeboat, which has recently been re-released. I want to do that one as well. Um, so we've got the Outlaw paints, orange BS557. 
and we've got the Outlaw Paints Oxford Blue BS105. If you haven't seen the review, go and have a look at the. I did a video very recently in the last two weeks about Outlaw Paints. They are bloody brilliant. They smell, but all good stuff does. <laughs> you know, um, you know your MRPs and your LPs and everything. Any any good lacquer paint is going to smell. So you need masks, you need extractors, you need an open window. Um, you don't want to be spraying it in your bedroom and then going to sleep half an hour later. You're going to kill yourself basically and he's also sent me this one as well this is the dark sea gray and this is for my um for my gun i'm doing for the wendy memorial build so thank you very much moss i wasn't expecting that i was expecting to buy this from you if you want some money let me know um and some of you were saying it should be extra dark sea gray uh, i'm not sure that it should but i want to use this anyway because i want it to be all faded because the aircraft was ba based in nicosia and having been to nicosia and Having spent a day in nearly 50 degree temperatures, believe me, that paint would have faded. So if I need to darken it up, I can. But the thing is with this, if you, if you start with something light, it's easier to do your pre-shading and everything and have that showing through to give you the darkness, if you know what I mean, rather than, you know, going with the correct colour and then have to look, do the lighting panels in between. So that's what I'm doing. And this is one that uh, Jason sent me from Australia. You can see he's done my own logo on the on the bottle. And that's RAF Sky, so that's for the bottom. So that's the colours it's going to be. That one's not fully shaken up. I may actually darken it up a bit. Um, I did also notice in my Outlaw Paints range, I've got, where is it? Dark Slate Grey. So I'll have to look at that. I don't know if that would be more appropriate. We shall see. But um, it's, I can always mix a bit. It doesn't matter. Whatever. So, um, so thank you very much for the paints, Moss. I, I wasn't expecting that. And thank you also very much for the book. I wasn't expecting that. So let's have a look at this starter set. So you can see on the back, we've got all our colour call outs here. We can see it's 190 millimetres long, 63 millimetres wide. And it's got 54 pieces. It also comes with a stand. It's got a little lifeboat on, a little um, label on there. And we've got all the different languages with all your health and safety stuff. So make sure you read that, especially if you're a youngster. So let's have a look at what's in this box. As you can see, it's all sealed up. It hasn't been opened, so... This is fresh off the bat. Um, I do remember, I mean, if, if you saw my starter set video on the um, Spitfire, there are two brushes in here. I love these brushes. I really do love them. Um, if you saw my starter set video on the Spitfire, you'll know how much I love the instructions. So I hope I, I, I saw James's review from Tibaldi Go Model Works. If you haven't seen his channel, go and have a look. Give him a subscribe. He's getting close to a thousand now. That's Tibaldi Go Model Works. If I think of it, I'll put a link down below. So we've got a lovely set of instructions here. We've got a lovely set of decals, decals. You can see there we've got the, the yellow and red stripes down the side. And we've got um, RNLB, Jokinan Slater. Why have we got RNLB? It's a bit strange. RNLI 1301. So we've only got one option in this, in this decal set, but you can also get, as I say, the aftermarket decal set. Or if you're in a club or a group of friends or something, you can go and buy a sheet and chop it up and share them around. But um, yeah, very nice. Lovely deck will sit. I expect they're cartograph. Yes, they are. So they will be awesome. Airfix cartograph decals, they just seem to be better than cartograph decals. So here we have our paints. These are in the newer pots, I believe. Um, and these will be acrylic water-based paints. Um, and obviously you get your brushes as well. And they are... I, I really do like these brushes. They are very nice. I've said that about 10 times now, haven't I? They're very nice. And then we've got our glue in there as well. You've got the tube glue. I'd recommend not using that. Get yourself some uh, liquid cement. Get yourself one of these. Tamiya Extra Thin. It's absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, you know, uh, one of my fears with this, well, you could get the Revell contactor with the little metal tube, but the trouble is the tube keeps blocking up. The trouble is with this, it can be quite stringy. They do show you in here, I think, how to apply it with a bit of cardboard and a stick and everything. But it kind of, if you're new and you're trying to build a lovely looking model, this is going to fight you all the way because when you pull the pull your stick away from the glue, you get the stringing. Um, you, you, it takes ages to dry, so you have to wait for everything to dry. Whereas the Tammy Extra Thin dries in seconds, especially in warm weather. Um, and you sort of hold parts together, you get a bit on your finger and then it's all damaged the plastic underneath. So get yourself some liquid cement, you'll, you'll get on much better with that. So we got the paints there, so uh, we won't be using those. I may use one or two colours, I don't know, but I won't be using the, definitely won't be using the, um, 
the blue or the orange because I've got those beauties there. So very rich colours, aren't they? Very nice. So they go really nice on like a pickup truck, two-tone pickup truck or something as well. Right, so we'll put this bag of parts to one side and we'll have a look at the instructions. So here we go. So here we are before you start. Tools that may help you build the model. So they're talking about some nail files. So get yourself some sanding sticks. Or if you want to, go to your local supermarket and get one of these. These little thin wood nail files. Absolutely brilliant. Um, don't get the, the big fat sponges that women used to, well, people used to polish the nails. Don't use the big fat sponges. Just get something thin like that. Get yourself some tweezers. You all know what tweezers are. Some scissors, some clippers. If you can run to it, get some of these Tamiya one type ones. They're quite expensive, but if you're into modeling for years, they'll pay for themselves time and time again. Um, a drill, a little pin drill. I can thoroughly recommend this one if you can get older one. This is the David Union 150 pin vice. You get this from Premium Hobbies if he's got any in stock. And uh, very, very nice indeed. Uh, the beauty of this is it will hold um, from 0.3 to 5 mil in one pin vice. You don't have to keep changing the collet. I'm not going to go on about tools because I keep talking about tools. Some tape, get some masking tape. This Tamiya stuff, you can, if you're in the UK, you get this from Hobbycraft or whatever. You get it from eBay. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And some clothes pegs. Just get yourself some ordinary, common garden, plastic clothes pegs. Absolutely brilliant. Wash the parts in some dishwashing soap, in some warm soapy water, not hot, in warm. And then once, they, once you've washed them off and they've had a chance, rinse them off and allow them to dry. Don't go trying to wipe them dry and everything because you'll break parts. So look for frame part, frame and part numbers. Use clippers to remove parts from frames. Use the sanding stick to clean up the edges. This is why you don't want a soft sponge because if you use a soft sponge, it'll just round everything off. You want something hard that it'll take it. When they tell you to drill, drill holes to fit parts if instructed. So like with this aircraft, you may have the option of having bombs underneath or not having bombs. So if you're not having bombs, you don't drill the holes. If you are having bombs, you drill the holes. The, the, op the, op the option is to have the holes there and have to fill them. Hold small parts with tweezers. Um, test fit parts before applying the glue. That, that always, always test fit parts. Do not use too much glue. That's what I was just saying this now. Clip or tape parts together while the glue dries. Stir in the paints thoroughly, paint small parts on the frame, allow time to dry between coats. Yeah, leave at least two hours. I'd say leave it overnight just to be sure. Worst thing is when you start painting and you, you know you might be working the brush a lot and you start lifting the colour underneath. Cut out decals with scissors. Don't ever use a knife, use scissors. Um, the reason that is if you use a knife when you pull it through the cardboard, it's like a plough, it raises the edges and it can make the decals difficult to get off. Hold the decal in warm water for about 20 seconds. Put it onto a piece of blotting paper or a towel or something. Just keep touching it. When you feel it starting to move, peel the paper away like that. Okay, so that's your little starter for 10. There we go. So, being this is a starter set, I reckon I'm going to really like these instructions because I love the way Airfix do this. I must say the instructions in their Ghana are some of the best I've seen. Okay. So there's your sprue call out, which is unusual for Airfix. That's all your sprues, that's all your parts, everything all laid out. Interestingly, if you look at these sprues, they've gone back to the old style, like the pig iron. You know, you've got the sprue with all the parts coming off rather than having a square frame. So that's unusual. So here, what they're doing here, they're giving you the, um, this is all the legend. So, you know, times to repeat. When you see a number in a circle, that's a part number. If you see this, the, the triangle with the knife in it, it means cut. I uh, can't see any cut signs on here at the moment. Um, glue, okay, do not glue. I can't see any do not glues on here. Optional parts, obviously a question mark. Paint colours, so you can see there we've got the box with the number 15 and the end of the brush is painted blue, so it gives you a clue, it's 15. Um, and then we've got decals, so when you get to decals, like, uh, will there be any decals at the back here? Now, you'll see, a, you'll see a red, it'll be on the back of the box, won't it? There you go. See those red squares? That means it's a decal. Decal if you're in America. Okay, so with the kit, basically, you're going to build up the stand. And you can see here, they're showing you an actual image of the sprue. So that's sprue A. And they're showing you the location of the parts you need. And I love this. That's great for beginners. Okay, and then sprue B, which is over here. 
and they're showing you the parts you need to take off. So you've got one, two, three, four, five parts there. One, two, three, four, five parts there. And then that's a picture there. You've got an image of the finished assembly. So it shows you if, you, if you're doing it right. They're showing you the yellow lines. That's where you apply the glue. OK, so um, here we go. I am going to be building this very, very soon. So uh, I'm keen to get on with it. Um, they're telling you all the painting call outs here. You can choose to when you want to paint it because I don't know if they're doing it here. No, they're not. That's okay then. So build up the hull. I would suggest build up the hull and add the deck and then do all your painting. Because when you come to glue the deck on, you're going to ruin the paint on the edge there probably. So, um, and that's what you use your masking tape for as well. If you want to see me build this, as I say, you'll see me, see me do it very, very soon. I was challenged by, by Moss basically, I think. Um, so we're going to glue those um, drive units on. I'm not sure if they're jets or props or what they are. Um, so we've got the uh, the main hull built up there. There we go. So now we're going to start on the cabin. Uh, we've got a wheel, got the cabin there. Uh, we've got the instrument panel and everything. I'm surprised we don't have a deck or to put on the instrument panel. I thought I saw one on the sheet. Yeah, I th I'm sure I saw something on the sheet. There. I'm sure that's it there. And there's something there as well. So I could be wrong, but uh, it wouldn't be the first time. So there we go. So we've got all that there. So again, it's showing you there where the parts are on the sprue. Adding the windows. Um, that's nice. They've given us a little pad to glue. So you just glue those little pads and that'll be, you might even find they pop in and snap in. And then you're going to glue that down onto there. You can do it very carefully. Um, probably paint all the inside area first glue the top down and then mask off and paint everything. You might want to paint the top bit before you mask off the windows and that. But uh, as I say, you'll see me do a build of it, so we'll go from there. And then we're adding these little um, little keels there. We've got the, the, uh, the center keel there. And then we're going to add some little railings and stuff around the sides. You can be fiddly little parts. So if you are a youngster, it's your first kit. You might want to get some help doing this because it's going to be quite fiddly, all these little bits. Um, as I say, I heard Moss say on his channel on Monday, he's asked Airfix, you know, is this really a starter set? Because this is a lot of, uh, a lot of little parts, but you can do it. You can do it if you want to. So there you go. And then we've got the railings going on the back there. It's looking very, very busy. What colour is number 27? Silver. So that's all going to look good. Okay, so we've got all the railings around the side there. We've got a splash. Uh, windscreen there for the for the driver at the back and then we got all the um, antenna gear there going on we got some more antenna and bits and pieces going on and then we're gonna fit the boat onto our um, onto our stand add decals at this stage see rear of pack for positions so I'm a bit confused where is decal number one it is. It's the rear instrument panel. Okay, it's not inside the cabin. It's on the on the back part there where the uh, where the operator stood up. So there we go. So that's the instructions, and they are bloody lovely. They always are. Perfect starter sets. Really nice. Now uh, we've got this in the later dark grey plastic. It's not the old blue tack plastic that Airfix used to use. So that's good. Um, this looks even darker than the Gannet actually. Just looking. It is. It's darker than the Gannet plastic. So it's obviously a different plastic or just a different colour, whatever. So we put that bag over there to one side. We've got our bag of clear parts here. I'm not going to get these out because I don't want to scratch them. You can see there we've got, we've got an extra light on there. You can see there we've got our clear parts. So they are lovely and clear and they're a single injection. So we won't have any um, spidering or spider lines. And because they've all stayed on the sprue, there won't be any scratching. So that's lovely. We we'll put those to one side. We don't want to scratch them. So we've got our main... That's our main cabin there. I'm going to cut that bit of sprue off in case that gets broken off. It's going to make a mess of that part. So here we go. I've cut that off because I was worried if it snaps off, it'll rip a chunk of plastic with it. So there's our main sort of cabin area. That's all going to be bright orange. We've got some lovely raised detail on there. It's clearly slide molded, which means they've used. They've used at least. You've got the bottom tool. There will be a top tool and there will be two side tools. There may even be a front tool. But um, yeah, very nice. It's beautiful molding. It really is. Very, very. Airfix are really getting their game together. 
really really nice lovely so here's our main hull careful not to break those off of there because again you'll rip chunks out so you get the size of it there there's my hand you can see it's a, it's a decent size model so that's all going to go together but ejector, part, ejector pin marks in there but they don't matter at all um, I'm going to cut these off of here because they're likely to snap off and cause some issues so there we are so that's our main hull then we've got the main deck that's not going to break yes it is cut that off of there I would suggest you do the same guys so there we are with all our seats and we've got a couple of uh, displays there so um, that's all going to be painted up and you can add some detail or whatever I'm sure there will be um, plenty of reference material around for these but um, they ask you to wash it because they may have some mold release on it so it's, it's always a good idea to wash them first um, that part there is going to break off so I'm going to cut it off so it doesn't rip the part apart that one there is the same okay I'm not worried about those because they're internal members and these are on the bottom tab so they won't matter so um, some lovely side grill detail there there's some, also some detail that will grab rail there these are the inner formers for the hull that's going to make it all go together nice here we've got the rear door this is the door entrance into the cabin that's going to sort of go up in there this piece so we've got the door entrance into the cabin and then there's that display there's going to be all the radio gear above it so it's going to look very very nice indeed and you can see what they've done here they've molded the b in so you've got the b there so it's easy to see sprue a very careful here because these railings are going to want to get broken you look at those parts to be sorry there's the rear end so that's the drives coming out of the back where all the hard work's done so that's the back end of the hull I think they call that transom don't they this is going to be part of the I think this goes inside the actual body not exactly sure that is that's part of the rear end as well I think we've got a little finely molded railing on there as well look, which is very nice so coming along here we have sprue A, we've got some very fine detail here, there's the antenna. It's all going to be easily broken, I'm hoping none of this is broken. There's one piece broken there. Um, but yeah, very nice indeed, we've got the little keels there. We've got that framework to go over the top. There's our stand, we've got two parts of the stand there. Really, really nice. I love the way they've moulded these as one, because often what happens is they mould these parts like this, with two sprue connections the plastic comes through the gates meets in the middle and it just snaps so I love the way they've done that that's really cool well done airfix well done tool designers whoever you are and here we have some fine railings there's our rail handrails for around the side We've got these railings here that one's been snapped that's not a problem it's not an issue uh, could have been packaged a bit better I think but um you know we just got all these tiny little fine parts and only one's broken so that's cool uh, if you are buying one from a shop perhaps ask to open the box and inspect the parks before you take the kit home rather than get home and find it's all smashed up but uh, yeah very nice indeed beautiful fine moulding really lovely see the fine moulding on those there so all in all it's a lovely little kit but I'm looking at this and I have to agree with Moss is this a starter set you know it's a uh, you don't need to be a you know 20 years experienced modeler to build it but I think it's sort of you might want to consider it as you third perhaps build a you know a, a, a starter set p51 a starter set um, Spitfire and then you'll be ready for this but uh, these little parts I wouldn't make this your first kit guys I think you might struggle a bit with all these little parts and you'll probably break them getting them off the sprue and all sorts of stuff so uh, you're going to have to have some of these little clippers for stuff like that. You can't go snapping parts off the sprue or, you know, using your bloody great big scissors and stuff like this because you're going to start breaking things. So but as I say, I will be doing a build of this because, because I really want to build it. Um, because apparently there's some issues about the deck could be a bit troublesome in that and I want to see if I can get around that. I, uh, I love a challenge. And also I'm really becoming a big fan of Airfix. I, I really do enjoy their kits. Um, so the two builds I've got on going at the moment, one is the, the Gannet, which is Airfix, and I've got the, um, the 172nd scale Lancaster on the go, 
which is also air fixed, but I need to get my A20 back out and my Lancaster from border. So there we go. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Moss. That's wonderful. Once again, guys, go and get this book. I split my I spilt my extra thin. Uh, Ramblings from a scale modeler. Look it up on Amazon. It's available as I say. It's available as a book and it's available as Kindle. So uh, buying model kits and supplies. I'm all woman. I have been in a few relationships with the opposite sex in my 45 years on this planet. Some have been long term, some have lasted no more than Liz Truss was Prime Minister. But to be fair, her reign as the leader of the UK was basically a work experience placement. <laughs> so yeah, you can see it's got a lot of um, a lot of interest. It's almost kind of, and I'm, he's going to get a bloody big head here, it's almost kind of Jeremy Clarkson-ish some of this. Yeah. Right. So I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much, Moss. Don't forget, Monday night, 8 p.m., guys, Moss6510 on YouTube. Um, and you'll probably, if you want to see my ugly mutt and hear my meanderings, then I'll probably be on there. Um, I don't normally go on right from the start. I normally go on about halfway through, which is about nine o'clock, because it generally goes from eight till ten. And there's a different sort of subject every week, and you guys ask questions and stuff. So I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.